Greetings, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Orbiter 2010. Um, we are doing something different now that we've finished with the Raven Star. We are using the Delta Glider 4. Um, Delta Glider 4 is in another add-on vehicle based off of a default vehicle called the Delta Glider. Um, Delta Glider 4 has a lot more functionality than the Delta Glider. Unfortunately, it does not have a 3D cockpit. And I guess I could show you what it means when we get to the Delta Glider 4, or the Delta Glider original. Um, one thing this does have, though, is an autopilot. So let us set that up and start that running so that'll be running while I talk. Um, the Delta Glider 4 is what's called UMMU compatible. And what that means in the end game is that it can do a lot of cool stuff that's more realistic than not being UMMU compatible. Um, one of those things it is the people. Um, there are a class of object, I guess you could call them, that are people. And these people are actually objects in the game. So here's one of them. That's my pilot and my one passenger for this trip is sitting right here. And those people for this trip are named Christopher Coles and Burton Lambert. And they are um, simulated individually, which means that if something happened, then what happens to one doesn't necessarily affect the other. So one of them could die while the other is just knocked unconscious, or one of them gets knocked unconscious while the other one's just fine, or whatever. Um, so another thing it means is that they use air, and sometimes, under special cases, they use food as well. Um, so how they use air, we have life support system with reserve with 16 days on, well, 15 days for each A and B, which amounts to 30 days of air and, well, I guess it's just air. Um, 30 days of air for these two people. If there was five people, then this would not be 30. It would be 14, so it would be 7 and 7. Um, did it just me or did that number change from 15 to 14? Well, that's odd. Anyway, um... <laughs> The life support system of the Delta Glider is a lot more comprehensive as well. Um, you have the fan, the filter, the coolant, and moisture. Um, fan filters air, filter, well, fan circulates air, filter filters it. Cool keeps it cold or hot, depending, and moisture gives it a nice 36% um, humidity of happiness. And you can change most of these things. You can change the pressure, um, oxygen and temperature, which means anything on this graph. In the green, you're good. So let's say we wanted a really low pressure, or lower pressure, we would have to raise the oxygen to about there. And the graph changes, but our people are happy no matter what they do. So I guess I'll just leave it like that because I don't, don't think I have the skills to put it back to normal. Um, so... I really like the Delta Glider because of what it's doing right now. It is flying itself and taking off itself. And the problem with that is these autopilots that it runs are specified for either Mars, Earth, or the Moon. And if you're anywhere else, you gotta do it yourself, which I guess you gotta do it yourself with the Raven Star as well. But what it also means is that um, there are re-entry autopilots for this, and the re-entry only works on Earth. If you want to land anywhere else, you have to re-enter it manually, which is very, very difficult since there's not an attitude autopilot. That is, I don't think. Now, hold on. Let me check. Twelve... Hold altitude... Uh, docking auto, no hold attitude. There is! 
Huh. Well, there we go. Um, it's just not as intuitive, I guess, as the Ravenstar. Well, that just blew my argument out of the water. Um, so there we go. Um, the automatic re-entry only works for Earth, so if you want to set it and let go and just sit back and watch, then you can only be at Earth, and in fact, you can only have a less than 2 degree re-entry angle, and you have to be less than 19,000 kilograms. And how you figure out your kilograms is right here, vessel mass. So we are at 24,000 kilograms, and dropping quickly because we're burning up fuel as fuel is wont to do. Um, so before I start talking about the International Space Station and more about what UMMU compatible means, I'm going to talk a little bit about pressure. Um, there are two pressures that you have to worry about yourself, or worry with an orbiter. There's STP and DNP, and that's static pressure and dynamic pressure. Static pressure is usually, well, it's still air, and it basically means it's just, my dad always said it was like feeling the air, so uh, I bet you they don't have the static port actually given on the ship. Um, it's just the pressure of the air around you, not in relation to your speed. So the pressure at 30,000 feet would be the same if we were hovering or if we were flying at Mach 20, which would be very bad to do at 30,000 feet. Um, that's what static pressure means. Dynamic pressure is the pressure in relation to your speed. And that is done by this, um, this tube right here you can see. I'm trying to get a good view of it. Um, right here, it's kind of facing forward. You can see it there at the bottom. It's called a pitot tube, and it air basically just runs into that, and you get dynamic pressure, which is how much force the air has on you based on your movement. So at 30,000 feet, going Mach 20 would have a very large dynamic pressure. Um, so dynamic pressure is almost always larger than static pressure unless you're sitting still, in which dynamic pressure would be, you know, close to zero. Um, pressure is measured in pascals, which is a gram per square meter. So this means at 0.2 pascals for every square meter of our craft, there is 0.2 grams of air weighing down on it, which is not that much. Um, normal sea level pressure is about 101 kilopascals. So, 0.1 pascal is a percent of a thousandth of a percent. It's low. And, which makes sense, because we're at 115 kilometers. So, I have some time now, and I don't have to f stay focused on this ship, because it's flying itself, which is amazing! Um, oh, wait. Does it have... It doesn't look like it has glowy. I don't think the Delta Glider has um, has it where the engines light up the craft. But it has an autopilot that flies itself. So, there we go. So let's switch to the International Space Station. Wow, that's actually a really cool view. The International Space Station, the Earth, going to the night terminus, and the Moon! And that, which is probably something that I can zoom out really far and see, but I'm guessing it's a planet. And because the Sun's over there, it's probably not Venus thinking Jupiter, but I'm not sure. Anyway, going inside, you have this brick of text which explains all the displays and what they do. Um, F6 is UMMU. There it is right there. Um, this International Space Station, by the way, is not the same one that we docked with with the Ravenstar. This is a UMMU-compatible International Space Station. It's also a add-on. And... <coughs> uh, it's called Project Alpha ISS, if you want to add one yourself. Oh, this is going to take forever. I shouldn't have done that. Um, and yet I still do it. There it is. Project Alpha. But we already have one, so we don't need it. Anyway, see this brick of text? Um, there are five docks, just like the original, and there are currently five people in the space station. Again, these are all being simulated. Well, maybe not being currently. Um, their names, jobs, ages... 
uh, over here we have the consumables, which shows us that we are dangerously low on oxygen and food, and all of these poor people are in dire need of getting stuff to them. So, we should probably do that. And we are doing that. That's why we have launched. That's why we are taking the Delta Glider and not the Raven Star, which can hold, you know, 14 people, whereas this can only hold 5. Um, because, unlike the Raven Star, at least I think, there's probably an add-on that has the Raven Star allowed to take these cargoes. But, um, the Delta Glider 4 was designed to be able to hold... Well, not designed. It can hold... Um, UMMO, UMMU crates, which in this case we have two food and waters and two oxygens. And we are going to deliver those to the International Space Station so they can live. And this is actually one of the scenarios that you can that you get when you download the Project Alpha ISS. So that is our goal, is to get these to the International Space Station. Um Along the way, we I will talk about EVA, which is extravehicular activity, and how UMMU makes that also awesome. And later on, we will get to base building. Not probably not on the moon. I might do that on Europa, but that's kind of a spoiler for one of the UCGO missions. So I'll I'll think about where I'm going to do the base building. Um, for now. We're just delivering these to the I ISS, doing some, uh, doing some EVA, and I'm probably going to show you the re-entry autopilot for this, which still I cannot land on a specific dot, so I'm going to overshoot or undershoot whatever I'm aiming for, most likely. If it doesn't happen, I will be very surprised. So yeah, I'm um, going to end the video here and continue in the next one. So see you then.